Hey, are you even listening to me? We're talking about our daughter's career path for her senior year at high school, but my husband is just looking at his phone. I'm talking about something important to you. Shut up. If she wants to go to a college, then she has to pay for it herself. I don't have money to give to a stupid daughter who can't take care of her own grandmother. Huh? What the hell does he mean? I looked at my husband's phone and saw something outrageous on the screen. My husband, Dave, and I have been married for 18 years. Our only daughter, Anna, is a sophomore in high school. I ate very well. Good, but make sure to clean up after your plates. Okay. Hey, aren't the exams coming up soon? Yeah, that's why I'm studying now. You should also start thinking about what path you want to take in the future. I know, I know. It was that time of year I get concerned about Anna's future career path, but I'm relieved that she's growing up well. Like this, the three of us were getting along well and living a peaceful life together. But there's one thing that worries me a little. And that's my mother-in-law, Judy. My mother passed away soon after I got married. At the funeral, Judy said and did something inappropriate. <laughs> uh, Mom... You're my son's wife now, so don't cry over something like this. Huh? The reason she died so early was because her bad behaviors on daily basis, right? She'd say very insensitive stuff at me, who was crying at the time, and she also made fun of my mother. What are you talking about? That's inappropriate. If you're going to talk like that, then get out. Wh what? My husband, Dave, was furious with Judy while I was too stunned to speak back. Since then, I haven't had any contact with Dave's side of the family and haven't seen my parents-in-law. Judy's attitude was horrible, but I feel like my anger faded over time. It's not like we have completely cut ties, and I wonder if it's okay for us to continue not interacting with them. They are grandparents to my daughter after all. That's what I think about sometimes. And then, I received the news that my father-in-law had passed away. Since he was my husband's father, we attended the funeral. Uh, honey, uh. Judy was in tears at the funeral. Judy, whom I hadn't seen in a long time, looked weaker and smaller. I guess she's grieving from the bottom of her heart over the loss of her loved one. Few days later, Dave was staying at the parents-in-law's house for the funeral and inheritance procedures. When he returned home after his short stay at his parents' house, he proposed to move in with Judy to me. My mother is the only one living in their house now, and she seems to be very depressed. I see. I pictured Judy crying alone. With my father-in-law gone, she must be feeling very lonely. I can understand why Dave was worried for Judy. I was thinking that we could move in with her. Please? Yeah, okay. I agreed to live with Judy in the end. So, we moved into my parents-in-law's house. But, once we started to live together... I look forward to living with you, Judy. You haven't done anything great as a wife until now, so you should work hard to make up for it. What? Now make me a tea quickly. Can't you see me being depressed here? You should be more considerate. How dare Judy take it out on me? I decided to move in with Judy because I thought she was lonely, but what is with her attitude? And Dave and I both work, but he leaves all the house chores to me. Hey, is dinner ready yet? I just got home from work. You're such a 
bad wife, ignoring what you need to do in the house when you're a wife. I'm really disappointed in you. Ugh. Why does she always complain about me so much? And now, Judy began to blame Anna too. Hey, please go fold the laundry. But I'm studying right now. What a charmless girl you are, just like your own mother. What? You can't even obey to your elders. Girls are supposed to help around the house instead of studying. Huh? You're really annoying. Anna was at her adolescence, so she became rebellious towards Judy. Studying is useless. Doing the house chores are much more useful. You're freaking annoying! My goodness, she's such a useless child, isn't she? The relationship between Judy and Anna was getting worse. It came to the point where I was regretting why we were living with her and wondered why I had agreed to live with her. Dave, on the other hand, was gradually being brainwashed by Judy. I'm home. Welcome home, honey. Come on, let's get your bag and jacket over the here. You should sit and relax here. Oh, thanks. It's actually the wife's job to serve her own husband. I'd like to teach Clara all the things I would do as a wife, but it's hard to even do that when she's not motivated about it and doesn't take me serious. Really? When Judy lies and cries, Dave defends her and doesn't listen to what Anna and I had to say. <laughs> Clara and Anna is always harassing me. Please do something about it, sweetie. <laughs> You're disgusting, harassing my own mother. I've never harassed her, ever. She always crumples up my laundry, and it's just terrible what she does to me. <laughs> I've never done that before. Rather, she's the one who complains and harasses me all the time. How dare you talk like that? You're not being a good wife at all. No, grandmother's lying. And all you do is take her aside. Stop butting in. It's all thanks to me that you can live your life like right now. You do know that, right? Believing in Judy's lies, Dave began to swear at me and our daughter. While this frequently happened, Anna became a senior in high school. And on the day of a parent-teacher conference at our daughter's school, I attended every parent-teacher conferences and I always told Dave about it. And this time again, we were talking in the living room after dinner, but... Anna is thinking about going to college too. Yeah, I narrowed it down to a few places that have the department of my choice. Her teacher said that if it's this college that she wants to go to... Hey, are you even listening to me? Dave wasn't saying anything and was just looking at his phone. He didn't seem like he was listening to me and he didn't even look interested, which was the same as how he was last year. I'm talking about something important to you. Shut up. If she wants to go to a college, then she has to pay it for herself. I don't have money to give to a stupid daughter who can't take care of her own grandmother. Huh? I rolled my eyes at Dave, who said this in an annoyed tone. What on earth is he even saying? Huh? What do you mean, stupid? I don't have any money of my own and you're being so irresponsible, Dad. You have some nerve to only depend on me when you need money. You have a thick skin just like your mother. I wonder how your mother educated you like that. What? When my daughter argued back to Dave, he got really angry. Then, Judy interrupted and joined Dave to argue back. If the mother is not good enough, then the daughter will not be good enough either. 
A daughter who doesn't know her place and gets cocky doesn't deserve to have anything paid for her. That's right. Why should I pay money for a selfish, stupid daughter? How dare he says that Anna was selfish? We have been saving for our daughter's college fee, and it's not like we didn't have any money. I couldn't take it anymore that Dave and Judy would say something like that just because they didn't like us. If you're going to be this annoying about money, then fine. I'm getting a divorce. I was so frustrated that I could declare for a divorce. There is no way you can afford Anna's college fee on your own, you idiot. Dave scoffs at me as he says that. If you want a divorce, do whatever you want. I don't want a useless wife who can't take care of her own husband's family. And I don't want a stupid daughter who is educated by such idiot wife. The savings for the family that you and I had together will be used for my family. Mainly my mother, so don't you dare count on it. Oh, I see. Well, I hope that we live in a world where your arrogance is tolerated. Dave yells at me as he looks down on me, and I laugh back at him without flinching. Don't you worry about the money, just follow me, Anna. I turned to my daughter and gently told her. My daughter, puzzled by the sudden turn of events, remained silent. You're going to go to your father and cry to him, aren't you? He should be so annoyed by you to be depending on him at your own age. Well, I guess it can't be helped since he's the one who raised you to be his idiot daughter. You get angry when people speak horribly of your own family, but you speak horribly of other people's families. You're so contradicting. My daughter seemed to realize something when she heard that. Let's go now, Anna. Yeah, I'll follow you, Mom. So Anna and I left my parents-in-law's house. For the time being, we decided to stay at my parents' house. A few days later, I asked my lawyer to proceed with the divorce. I sent a letter of content certified notice to Dave. A few days later, my husband came over to my parents' house. What are you doing here? I'm sorry. I sincerely apologize. I don't want a divorce. Please come home. When I answered the door, he apologized instantly. My husband hangs on to me with a stupid look on his face. Actually, I had noticed that the savings we had made together as a couple were decreasing. When I requested for a background check to the credit card agency, I found out that Dave was spending money to a hostess in a club. He was secretly preparing for divorce. And apparently, Dave was known to be one of the customers that club hostesses didn't want to get involved in. I'm going to divorce my wife, so marry me. Huh? What are you even saying? I truly love you, and I can make you happy. Uh, I'm not really looking for that. After I declared for a divorce, he proposed to a club hostess that he has been crazy about. When the proposal was rejected, Dave was unsatisfied and he was finally banned from the club because he kept on pursuing her. His contact information was also blocked by her. Still not ready to give up, he waited for the club hostess near the club. I'm serious. Please just listen to me. I have to go to work now. Please, I need to talk to you. I'm in a hurry. When he tries to talk to her directly, she coldly rejects him. After being seen multiple times by Dave's colleagues, he was shunned within his company. When his boss found out about his nightlife activities, he was called in for questioning. I heard that you've been stalking a club hostess into the club. I'm not too impressed with that kind of behavior. I'm serious about our relationship and I'm thinking about marrying her. I really love her. I understand your feelings, but I'm not sure if she has the same intention as you. 
If I get to talk to her properly, then she will understand. Well, to begin with, I thought that you had a wife and a daughter. My wife and I are divorcing. Both my wife and my daughter are annoying and have the nerve to say things about going to a college. The hostess from the club is a much better woman than my selfish wife and my daughter. What? Now, wait a minute. Dave explained to his boss about the details of the events leading up to the divorce and was astonished at Dave's shallow arguments. What the hell are you thinking? As a husband, you ought to consider your own wife's position. No, but my mother... Did you even listen to your wife properly? You only listen to what your mother has to say, but if you're the husband, you should listen to what the wife has to say too. Urgh. Besides, you don't take your daughter's college talk seriously, but you're into another woman. How dare you think that what you're doing is good enough as a father? You better cool your head. Urgh. Yes, sir. Dave was shaken up when his boss confronted him in a stern tone. Then, Dave was demoted and given a pay cut by his boss. I sent him a letter of content certified notice, demanding a divorce and custody of Anna. And I demanded a division of property, and the money he had spent on the club for alimony. I'm really sorry. I was wrong. Let's start over. Even if we don't get divorced, you still have to pay for the money you spent behind my back, though. What? I lightly point out about money, and Dave is surprised. I knew that he just didn't want to pay. He doesn't genuinely want us to come back, does he? I sigh in disgust. You leave all the house chores, looking after Anna, and taking care of your own mother to me. I can never get back together with a scum like you who decides the future of Anna and I just because you were my husband and tries to live a happy life when you're only playing around with young, cute girls. Urgh. I refuse to get back together with him once and for all. Then, my daughter showed up from the back of the house. Anna, I'm really sorry. I'll be a good father to you, so let's start over. When Dave noticed Anna, he clung on to her. But Anna glared at Dave coldly. Do you have any idea what I've been going through these past few months? If you think that you can be forgiven with just one such light apology, you're being stupid and just because I'm only in high school, you look down on me too much. Urgh. A father who takes away his own daughter's future options, but plays around and pays to other young women is just too creepy and gross for me. <sighs> Dave couldn't hide his shock at Anna's complete rejection towards him. He slumped his shoulders and left. Then soon after, my husband was completely depressed. I can't stand middle-aged men who can't tell the difference between reality and fun. He was also rejected from the hostess at the club. Eventually, Dave gave up trying to get back with me and finally proceeded to pay the fees I had claimed him. The money he spent on the club and the alimony was covered by the money from my ex-father-in-law's inheritance, but that wasn't enough, so the rest was paid in installments. The monthly alimony and child support payments are difficult for Dave, who had a pay cut at work. After the divorce, Judy visited me once at my parents' house. You have made my life difficult. I forgive you, so you should forgive my son too and come back home. Judy blamed me at the front door and screamed at me. I'm so fed up with my selfish mother-in-law, who is always looking down on me. I called Dave, and he rushed over to pick Judy up. Mom, what are you doing? I'm telling your stubborn wife to get her act together. 
I'm not his wife anymore. I have a record of what you've been saying to me when we lived together, so I can file a claim for alimony if that's what you want. Are you even listening to what you're saying to me? Huh? How dare you talk to me like that? Judy got angry at me as I spoke calmly, but... That's enough! You're putting me in a bad position, mother! Ugh. Dave lost his temper to his own mother. Dave got so angry that he put Judy in an institution. With the alimony and child support payments and the payment for the facility, my ex-husband's life has become quite tight. Ugh. Another tough month. He has to do all the house chores by himself, and he's living a lonely life on his own now. My daughter and I are spending peaceful days at my parents' house. She's doing her best to pass the entrance exam for college, despite everything that had happened. Here you go, your dinner. Why don't you take a break? Thanks, I was actually just getting a little hungry now. I'll eat now. You're working hard, but don't push yourself too much. I'm my mother's daughter, and you don't have any good luck with men, so I'm going to do my very best and become an independent woman who can live on her own without depending on a man. Oh, I see. I laughed at her jokingly. But if my daughter is working hard to follow the path she has chosen, I'll do my best to support her. And I want her to be truly happy, more than anything else. <laughs>